Hello, I'm Lynn Dimer and I've been working with the National Heart Foundation now for 16 years. Why have I stayed there so long? Because I really have a passion and I'm committed to making a difference with my people in understanding their heart health journey. We've produced a series of video clips that will help you understand about the heart and heart disease. We hope that this will help you better look after yourself, your family and your community. Your blood pressure is made up of two numbers. There's the top number and the bottom number. The top number is when your heart beats. And we talked about before about feeling your pulse. So that's when your, your top number is when your heart is pushing blood out of your body. And the bottom number is when your heart's at rest and when your heart's filling with blood. And before we talked about when your heart is filling with blood, that's when the blood is going down your coronary arteries and is supplying um, the rest of the heart muscle with blood. When your heart has got uh, blood sitting in it, um, that's the pressure that's sitting in the bottle of coke when it's just resting is the bottom number, or some the hospitals call it diastolic number, but it's the bottom number. We should ideally have a, a pressure there between 60 and 90. Now, my son sometimes comes along and he grabs a bottle of coke and he shakes it up and down, and you can see that the pressure has then increased inside the bottle of coke. So whereas before it might have been 60, or 80 or something, now it's gone up to 110 because all the gases were getting ready to explode. Now, if I was brave and I took the top off, what would happen to the bottle of Coke? The Coke would suddenly spring out and we'd have like a little water fountain going everywhere. That is uh, the example of the top number, the systolic, where the heart is actually pushing blood out of the, um, out of the heart. Uh, if the diameter was this size before from the top of the bottle of Coke, and then I got my finger, and I put it over the top and made it this size, would the pressure be higher or lower with this hole or this hole? And now if you think of your garden hose, so with your garden hose when you're watering the footpaths, if you make the hole smaller, it comes out like a jet. And as it comes out like a jet, it actually clears the, the sand off the footpath or whatever you're trying to clean off. So if we actually, and that's because it has a higher pressure coming out. So what we do with our um, bottle of Coke is when we shake it up and down and put our thumb over it, we've actually got a higher pressure, so therefore the Coke, when it sprung out, would actually go higher. Now, what happens with people that have high blood pressure that can't feel it? For a long period of time, the, um, you're, um, you're walking around, you don't feel any different, and what happens is the high pressure that's coming out is shooting down these coronary arteries down here. Now, like we said with the footpath was that if you've got a, some sand, uh, a jet of water coming out of, the foot, uh, out of the hose and it moving the sand on the footpath, it's, if it's moving the cells on this, on this coronary artery wall, as it moves the cells on this coronary artery wall, it's going to gradually damage them. We, we know that if it gets damaged, then the body repairs it and it repairs it with scar tissue. The scar tissue starts to narrow off the blood vessels. And then what happens is because you can't feel it for a number of years, you keep walking around with high blood pressure and then the, the pressure continues down here and you end up with more and more scar tissue. Before you know it, you've started to get narrowing of your coronary arteries. Age has no relevance with, uh, with blood pressure. So uh, one of the things that I've noticed recently with my wife is that um, with her high blood pressure that she suffers with, her family, both mum and dad, have got high blood pressure. She's not particularly overweight, she's quite active. Uh, she started feeling quite tired and fatigued. So if you start feeling for tired and fatigued for no apparent reason, um, then we'd like you to get your blood pressure checked. If you want to get your blood pressure checked, then you need to pop down to your local AMS, go to your GP, or go to the uh, chemist around the corner. So one of the other things that we need to mention is about the effects of high blood pressure. Um, for those of us who have a high blood pressure, and obviously they haven't felt it happening, uh, you'll get damage to your eyes, the little blood vessels in your eyes will start uh, getting damaged, so you need to get regular eye checks done. Uh, some people will end up with, uh, with brain damage because the uh, blood vessels uh, will, can pop. Um, and also uh, one of the other important things is uh, those of us uh, will see a large number of people in the community that are having dialysis. And some of the causes for that can be with uh, renal damage from having the high blood pressure and the high flows of pressure uh, shooting through those kidneys. Um, so if we can get our blood pressure checked, 
early on in life and be, uh, keep track of it, then we might be able to prevent some of these long-term effects happening to us.